In this presentation, we're going to take a closer look at external business expansion, which includes things like mergers and business combinations. Get ready to act because it's time to account with advanced financial accounting. Before we move into the external expansion, you want to give a review and keep your mind on what our focus is. We're talking about a business that is expanding. When we think of it about expansion, we can break that expansion into internal and external expansion. So we have a business expanding into new areas, new segments. We can think of it as an internal or external expansion. In a prior presentation, we talked a little bit more on the internal expansion, in which case you might have a situation where a parent creates a subsidiary or a parent basically just creates another division possibly and expands in that format. Now we're going to be going to the external expansion, in which case we, we're talking about two entities. So we have two separate legal entities that in some or two separate entities in some case in some way, shape or form are coming together. So now we're going to have an expansion where we have an external expansion. So if we're think of it, thinking about this from the, from the standpoint of one company, we're thinking about ourselves as one company and we are expanding, then we're thinking about the expansion externally that we are, are going to be combining in some way, shape, or form with another company. Now, the format and form in which that uh, combination can take place can be various. We can have various forms of that combination. It could result in a parent-subsidiary type of relationship, or it could result in the parent basically consuming the, another company and bringing them into the uh, overarching parent company. So let's talk more about that's what we're focusing in on here, that type of external expansion with two separate entities that are somehow uh, coming together. So we have the term business combination. So when you think about the term business combinations, you're typically thinking of the external kind of expansion. So business combinations, acquiring or combining with other companies resulting in new areas of product and or new locations. That's the concept of the business combinations. Happens when an acquiring organization obtains control of one or more businesses. So that's going to be a key term, of course, when we talk about business combinations, is this concept of controls, especially if we have separate legal entities. Obviously, if, if one entity is consumed by the other and is now part of the one legal entity, then there's clearly a control situation because that that other legal entity that was separate at one point is now legally consumed or owned by one entity. No question about control typically in that type of situation. Where do we have questions about control? When we have two entities <laughs> that are still separate legal entities, they're still separate corporations. And again, I would think about them as kind of like people in some ways that in that the corporations have have rights or some kind of obligations that are granted to them that are typically only granted to people such as the right to own assets and be obligated by liabilities and therefore have to pay taxes separately and, and file their own tax returns and whatnot so if you talk about these separate entities that have kind of a a, a separate legal structure separate entities responsibilities that almost are assigned to people and and one is has control over the other that's where you get uh, the more complex type of relationship, especially if the control is, is not complete control. In other words, if you're talking about a situation where one entity doesn't own 100% of the stock of the other, but has a controlling interest, which generally would be over the 50%. So control, the ability direct to direct policies and management. So what is control? That's the ability. So if, if one company... Uh, obviously, when we're thinking about the concept of control, you can think about it from an investment standpoint. If you ha have ownership in uh, stocks of a corporation, you are typically are technically <laughs> the owner of that corporation. However, you exercise very little control over it if the percentage of ownership is very small uh, with regards to the, the corporation. However, as your percentage ownership goes up, then you are you have more exercise of control or you have more uh, control over what the corporation does how because you have control over the management in some cases in, in terms of the voting uh for you know the management of the organization if you have over 50 percent control then uh then you have control over in essence management and have a lot of influence over over the corporation in essence right so control methods so the typical kind of concept of control what does control mean it typically, you can think of it generally almost most of the time or almost all the time as having over 50% of the outstanding voting stock. So again, if you're talking about a, an entity, if you're talking about two entities and one entity basically consumes the other one, uh, 
then and they're no longer two separate legal entities then there's no question of control when there's they've been merged together and there's no real question if you're talking about two separate legal entities still they're two separate corporations then the concept is 51 50 percent over 50 percent so in other words in your mind when does when does control being hit it hits at 51 percent and above of the outstanding stock so if one company owns 51 percent of of the stock of another company you would think unless there's some other extraneous circumstances that they would have a control and interest they, and, and they could have less than that in some cases where there might be some other reasons why they have a control and interest but your mind is basically saying yeah anything above 51 percent of one entity owning the outstanding stock of another would mean they have controlling interest because obviously they have the voting power to vote in whoever they want in terms of the management of the organization the management having the power to control the policies of the organization so over 51 percent uh you're thinking control that means that if they own 80 percent clearly they're going to be in a control situation and obviously if they own 100 percent control situation and obviously if one company was consumed by the other and they're no longer separate legal entities then that kind of combination would mean that one company obviously has control over what used to be a, a separate legal entity use of contractual agreements and financial arrangements so it is possible note to have a situation where you have less than 50 percent if there's some kind of contractual arrangement or something like that that basically gives the parent company or the the one company a controlling interest even though they don't have the 51 percent which would typically be the case for a controlling interest so if you have a, have a question on it in terms of a test question it is is it possible to have less than 50 percent uh, and still have a controlling interest yes if you have some other kind of arrangements that, that give you that that basically controlling power through some kind of agreements or financial uh, agreements or arrangements but the general rule would be over the 51 percent okay a merger two companies are merged into a single entity so when you think about the type of business combination you were typically thinking about basically a merger or a controlling owner or a controlling ownership type of situation so a merger would basically mean you had two separate entities they've merged together in essence one entity consumed the other entity they were two entities they've been consumed the other entity has basically been dissolved or dissolved into the one entity so the larger entity typically has has uh, consumed in essence the smaller entity generally with regards to a merger so two companies are merged into a single entity so for legal entities the types of, like there's only one corporation at the end of the merger where there used to be two basically corporations or whatever type of legal entity that they had prior to that acquired businesses assets and liabilities are combined with the assets and liabilities of the acquiring company so from an accounting standpoint what's that going to look like well, you had assets and liabilities on the separate legal entity. You had assets and liabilities of the of the controlling or parent or the the company that's going to be merged that the other company is going to be merged into. And you're basically thinking, of course, that those assets and liabilities of the once separate legal entity are now going to be merged into the financial statements of uh, what is now the controlling or the one legal entity that will be uh, remaining. So that will obviously be a difficult process for the merger process to take place to the accounting relating to the consumption of the assets and liabilities into one set of books. However, after that takes place, the accounting is going to be a little bit more straightforward than other types of legal entities to some degree, because we don't have to think about two separate sets of books that need to be combined together in the future. We now, after the merger point, have one set of books. We have a combined entity. So from an accounting standpoint, once the merger has taken place, you would think from a from just a logistic standpoint it'd be a little bit easier to consider other the other type of, of format would be a controlling ownership so that's a combination where the acquired company remains as a separate legal entity so we had two separate legal entities before they're combining together however they're not being merged the bigger company is not completely consuming the other company but they are going to have a controlling interest in the other country company and the other company is going to have a con the larger company is going to have a controlling interest typically the larger company having a controlling interest of uh, the smaller company so that's going to be a, a situation that's a little bit it's going to be difficult to put them together to, to to format the structure of the parent subsidiary relationship and also the accounting going forward we're gonna have to think about well how are we going to deal with that because uh if, if there's a hundred percent ownership 
then you'd think you might want to combine the financial statements or something like that to show the control and interest. But what if there's a 50% ownership? So you can see it could be a little bit uh, complex, to, more complex from an accounting standpoint to think about how we can report trans in a transparent way a situation where we have two separate legal entities that are basically uh, have have a controlling interest in one or another, which may or may not be exactly on a hundred percent controlling interest. So the acquiring company has a majority of its common stock owned by the by the purchasing company. So we would think then of the purchasing company, then obviously being the one that's that's usually the larger company that's purchasing or somehow getting a controlling interest more than 50% of the uh, stock, which gives the control to the uh, to that company, to the, to the larger company. That results in a parent-subsidiary relationship. So now we have a parent-subsidiary type of relationship that will be resulting from this type of, of consolidation. Consolidated financial statements are generally required. So generally, if you have a controlling interest, more than 51%, generally being the, the standard of a controlling interest, then we need those consolidated financial statements. We need to be showing the financial statements basically as this company, uh, kind of like as if they're one entity, so that we can, and that's an attempt to be transparent in terms of the financial reporting, even though we have a more complex uh, legal structure with regards to two legal entities that, that are related in that type of way. So then we have the, the concept of a non-controlling. The other idea we can have with regards to related entities is a non-controlling ownership and uh, other beneficial interests. So remember, when you're thinking about these relationships, you can have a merger, you can have a controlling ownership. So that's where basically, you know, they, someone has one company has control over the other, either consumed the other company or they have a controlling interest to the degree that you basically need to merge the financial statements. Now you could have a non-controlling ownership. What if there's basically a purchase on the other company, but it's less than the, the 50%. That would be a non-controlling ownership. One company purchases less than a majority interest in another. So that means basically, you know, less than uh, like 50% or less generally, uh, does not generally require a business combination or controlling interest. So, uh, so in that case, then, uh, if, if you don't have the controlling interest, the controlling interest, in other words, you could think of as kind of like the triggering factor of when you would basically need to combine the financial statements. So from an, an accounting standpoint, we're thinking, all right, what are we going to do with this? One company is related to the other company. What do we have to do with it? Well, if there's a controlling interest in it, then typically you're going to have to do that combined financial statements for it. And that's usually going to happen when there's 51 or more percent of the stock owned by the other company. If less than that, then typically you're gonna to have to account for it in some other uh, way, and you're not gonna have that, uh, the, the, the financial statements be combined in that same way. And then we can have an other beneficial interest. It is possible for one company to have a beneficial interest in another without direct ownership. It may result from an agreement between the entities. So in other words, we might have some kind of contractual agreement where we have some type of uh, beneficial interest, again, with the two entities being related in some way, shape, or form, but not through direct ownership. In other words, not through the ownership of the of the stock, uh, a direct equity interest, but possibly through some type of contractual agreement.